G'day guys, Kieran here from KJ Hedge Woodworking. Welcome back to the channel. We have finished assembling our CNC from the Maker Store. We've got our dust collection hooked up. We are ready to make our first cuts. But before we can do that, we need to program our VFD, which is our variable frequency device, which powers our spindle, as well as get our software set up on our computer to actually run the machine. So we're gonna show you how to do that today. Let's jump on the computer. Okay, so first things first, we wanna go to the Maker Store website and then find the manual specific to your VFD. So if you go up here on the manuals section, scroll down under the electronics section on the left-hand side and find your spindle and VFD. So mine is a 1.5 kilowatt spindle and VFD. So then from there, we are going to scroll down. We're gonna skip the VFD connections because that needs to be done by a licensed electrician. Today, we're simply gonna focus on programming the VFD. So scroll down to find your specific machine. They're all slightly different, but they will have a manual on your specific machine. So I'm gonna go down to the Frolin 1.5 kilowatt VFD, which is the unit that I've got up here. From there, it's gonna run you through how to actually program it because you will actually do damage to your spindle if you use it without programming it first. So to program your VFD, you've got this control panel up the top here, and then on the Maker Store website in the instruction manual, it'll actually walk you through exactly what you need to do. So to begin, you're gonna hit program, it's gonna bring up F00. Then you're gonna hit function to bring up the remaining digits. Jog down to 0.28, hit function. We're gonna go one, hit function. And that is going to reset this to factory settings. And then we can go through the list of parameters and make sure that we have set it correctly simply by going through each one. So the first one is F11. So F, F00.11. So function that needs to be set to one, which it is cool. Now we're going to go to F00.000. We're going to go function. That needs to be set to two, which it is. Okay. So point one needs to be set to zero, which it is. I'm not going to bore you by going through this step by step. You get the general gist. Basically, you need to make sure each individual number in your VFD matches what is in the instruction manual to program your machine. Then you can move on to the next step. And it is as simple as that to program your VFD, but I cannot stress it enough. If you skip programming at first and you jump the gun and you turn your spin off, you do risk damaging that spindle. But if you take the time to go through the steps as set out in the instruction manual, I know it's hard sometimes, but take that time and it pays off. Now let's jump into the software side of things and program our X-Pro which is the controller for the CNC. So again, from where we were, we're gonna go back to the home page of their website, go down under electronics, we are going to the X-Pro V5 control system. Because again, that's what we are using. If you're using a different controller, jump over to that one. This is what we've set up previously, so we're gonna skip over all of the wiring. If you wanna see that video, we'll leave our playlist linked in the description below. We're just gonna scroll all the way down to configuring your X-Pro V5 with CNC JS. Now you wanna make sure you're installing the right version for your PC, but go ahead, download that and get that installed on your computer. So once you have CNC JS installed, this is the screen you are greeted with. Just minimize that and go ahead and install the driver, which is the next box down. So we are gonna unzip that. Okay, so just a quick explanation of this setup. Over here, you have your connection, which is where you actually connect to your machine, your console, which actually shows you any statuses or errors. And then the widget that we will be using is the GRBL, because that is the one that our system runs on. So we're gonna go ahead and hit these three dots and remove the remaining widgets, because we don't actually need those and we don't wanna clutter up our workspace. Okay, on the top right, we have our quick action buttons, which is your homing, sleep, unlock, reset, followed by your axes, your G code, and your macros, and then lower down is your probe information. We'll get to all of that as we go through, but I just wanted to give you a brief rundown of what is actually in the system. Now, to connect your CNC, you want to use a USB-C to USB-A, not a USB-C to USB-C. For whatever reason, they do not work, so make sure 
sure you're using an A. If you're having problems, check that's what you're using. After you've plugged in your CNC, you wanna go up here to your connections box on the top left corner, hit the refresh button, and then you wanna find the port that is Silicon Labs. In my case, is comms three. So we're gonna select that. We, you're gonna hit connect automatically, and then we're gonna go ahead and open. As you can see in your console, now you have your command window, which is your black window there that says we are connected. Now we're gonna go up to the top right and we're gonna hit the reset button, which is gonna reset everything. And then at the bottom, you should see an okay. So your machine should have reset all of its standard parameters and then it'll say, okay. At this point, do not jog your machine. We haven't calibrated CNCJS to suit your machine. We'll do that in a second. At this point, we wanna jump back over to the Makerstore website and then download here the master list of their macros for configurating the specific machines. Okay, so once we've got that downloaded, we are gonna jump into the file and then it is gonna give us a list of every possible option that the Maker Store sell in terms of the CNC machines. We are using a WorkBee version three, so we're gonna go into that one. Then it gives us the transmission types. In our particular case, we are using a rack and pinion system, so we are gonna go into that file. Now you get your list of all of your file options with all of your size machines. It is listed with the X axis by the Y axis. So in my case, my X is 1,500, my Y is 3,000 and it's a high torque. So we're gonna find that file. So we have that one there. We're gonna open that and that is going to give us a list of all of the commands that are required to flash our X Pro. So to copy that over, hit Control A, everything will be highlighted. Control C is copy. Then we're gonna go back to CNC JS. On the right hand side, we have this macro widget down here. We are gonna add a new macro. We're gonna call it whatever you would like to call it. In our case, we're gonna name it something logical like WorkBee 3 1500 by 3000 high talk and then we are going to paste our command from there we hit okay and then in that macro field we've had added our work B macro. So to actually flash the X Pro, what we wanna do is hit the play button on that macro and then hit the blue run button. What you can see in your console list there is everything has been actioned by the okay. So from where we ran our macro, every step has been marked as okay down there. There's been no errors there. So now we know we have actually flashed our X Pro. So now our CNC is ready to use. But before we go ahead and do it, we wanna do some fine tuning of our machine to make sure everything is running properly and efficiently. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna check that our stepper motors are running in the direction that we want them to be running rather than what the actual macro does. So if we need to invert them or change anything, we can do that. Let's have a look at the machine. So I'm gonna do a bit of jumping back and forth between machine, computer, and you guys. So there's gonna be a lot of dancing around here. So first things first we wanna do is home the machine. So to do that, we're just gonna hit the blue home button in the top right corner. And that's actually gonna go ahead and home our machine. It'll move up to your limit switch and then come back off that and go back up to confirm its height then it's gonna do the same on the X and Y. So there we go, we've now got our zero, zero position of the machine. Now we wanna check that by moving it in a positive direction, it's actually going to move to the right and then front and back and then down. So what we're gonna do is jump over to the computer and we are gonna jog our machine on that right hand side. So in our case, we're gonna, whoops, we're gonna set this down to one millimeter. So you can change how far you're jogging it on the little, uh, drop down here. So we're gonna go to one millimeter. And on the X, we wanna make sure that the plus is taking it to the right. So X is correct, as you can see there. So now for your purposes on the on the camera, we're gonna make it 20 mil. So you can see that we are moving to the right there. And now we're gonna set it back to one. We're gonna check our Y. So Y is also correct. So if we set that to 100, we see we're moving in the back direction, which is what we want. So now we're gonna check our X axis. So by moving down, we are actually moving down. So we do not need to do any inverting. So we're actually set up the way we wanna operate but you may want it to be that by moving down, you actually go up or you've got it set as your zero, zero in the far right corner, whatever it might be, you can work it to suit you. The other reason it may not be behaving the same way as mine is how it's been wired up. It's not a problem. 
It's just how it's been done. So you may need to invert them based off your wiring. It's easier to do it in the software rather than mucking around with your wiring. So we'll jump back on the computer and I'll just run you through it how you actually do it. So to change that, we're gonna jump back on the computer and we're gonna open up that macro. So the macro that we created down in this bottom right corner, if you hit this little pencil and notepad, it'll actually edit your macro. You can go down to stepper motor direct invert, which is the fifth line down. So as per the standard, it has X there. So say I wanted to invert my Y, I could add a Y there. Say I wanted to invert my Z, I could add a Z. Or if I wanted to remove the X, I could delete that. So you've got that full control over your machine through that macro. So you can tweak and change things as you get more experience. And the maker store is always there to assist you if you need to call them and say, hey, I need to know what this does or I've got this problem. So make sure you reach out if you are having trouble. I know I've done that a couple of times. We are gonna call it there. This is Kieran from Six Months in the Future. I was going through editing this video and realized, man, it's getting pretty long. So we are going to split off setting up the XYZ probe and calibrating the CNC in the separate videos. So subscribe to the channel if you wanna see then. And you may notice that there is a nice looking hold down table powered by vacuums. I don't know if you can see them under there. If you want to see that build, definitely subscribe to the channel. If you've gotten anything out of this video and you think it deserves a thumbs up, smash that thumbs up because it helps us spread to more people like you. I think you are going to love what we have linked on the screen and we will catch you there. Happy building. Cheers, guys.